Father Bob Pirelli celebrated hundreds, if not thousands, of Masses here over 25 years. And he began each one by saying, in our Father's house we always begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you. He said that, didn't he? Every Mass. And it was 72 years ago that those who loved a little boy carried him to church one day. And in the waters of baptism, he was given the name Robert. And in those same waters, he was given a promise of God's love, a love that would never end. And today, those who love God bring him to church one last time. And the promise that was given to him 72 years ago comes to completion as he enters into the eternal life and the eternal love of God. On the day of his baptism, Father Robert Pirelli put on Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, found in your hymnals at number 891, for all the saints, number 891.
Wow. <laughs> Let us pray. Hear with favor our prayers, which we humbly offer, O Lord, for the salvation of the soul of Bob, your servant and priest, that he who devoted a faithful ministry to your name may rejoice in the perpetual company of your saints through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The first reading this afternoon is taken from the Hebrew scriptures in the book of Isaiah and will be proclaimed by Father Bob's dear friend, Robert Heichlin. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Is such the fast that I choose, a day for a man to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a rush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then show your light. Excuse me. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away from the midst the yoke, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire with good things and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring water whose waters do not fail. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to dwell in. Reading, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
The second reading is taken from the Christian scriptures, the Book of Romans, and will be proclaimed by Father Bob's dear friend, Margaret Zach. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Your love must be sincere. Detest what is evil, cling to what is good. Love one another with the affection of brothers and sisters. Anticipate each other in showing respect. Do not grow slack, but be fervent in spirit. He whom you service is the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient under trial, persevere in prayer. Look on the needs of the saints as your own. Be generous in offering hospitality. Bless your persecutors, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Have the same attitude toward all. Put away ambitious thoughts and associate with those who are lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never repay injury with injury. See that your conduct is honorable in the eyes of all. If possible, live peaceably with everyone. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home. Again, the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. His mother and his brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to About six weeks ago, <clears throat> A new nationwide suicide and crisis lifeline went into operation. Anyone in a crisis can dial 988 and be put in contact with a trained professional or mental health clinician. This is surely a technological marvel, but the real gifts are those 
who answer the calls. Specialists talk through a situation with someone in a crisis. They help callers realize that there is reason to hope despite the despair. By kindness, patience, and understanding, these counselors assure the desperate and the broken that they are not alone. As we bid farewell to Father Bob Pirelli, we remember a priest and a therapist whose kindness, patience, and understanding touched so many. He enjoyed celebrating Mass here. He respected Father Jack Lidwin and the other clergy and staff. Bob especially loved the parishioners. His many years at St. Joseph energized him and brought him great joy. In the 1970s, before Bob joined the Congregation of Jesus and Mary, the Eudists, he was assigned to St. James Church in Jamestown. While there, he was introduced to a woman religious who was a missionary in Guatemala. Then in the 1980s, when I was assigned to St. James Church, Guatemala was hit with an immense earthquake. One thing led to another, and eventually Bob and I raised money here in Buffalo and delivered it to the missions in Guatemala. Witnessing such faith and love among the people in the midst of unspeakable poverty was life-changing. Today's first reading says that we are vindicated when we shelter the homeless and the oppressed, when we share our bread with the hungry, on the day he died, one of the last things Bob did was serve meals to the poor at the Response to Love Center. During our month-long stay in Guatemala, we visited a church that actually has mass once a year. It took us five hours on horseback to get to that remote village. We were dirty, hungry, and we smelled like the horses we rode. <laughs> I said, Bob, I've never seen you sweat before. <laughs> With a withering look, he answered, I don't sweat, I perspire. <laughs> now this fastidiousness was evident in other areas of Bob's life, especially in his business, his vocation of helping people. After joining the UDIS, Bob attended Andover Newton Theological School and earned his doctorate. There he was introduced to family systems theory developed by Dr. Murray Bowen, a psychiatrist and researcher. Unlike other psychological models, Dr. Bowen's approach was not focused on ill health or on mental illness, rather, systems theory, centers on life development, and the challenges of being human. And because families introduce us into our world, we interact with the world through the lenses given us by our families. Only when a person differentiates 
him or herself from their family of origin can one truly find their identity. In this positive, person-centered concept, Bob discovered a connection to his faith, to the Christ revealed in the Gospels. Jesus' own family had expectations for and about him, as we heard in the Gospel. But Jesus rejects those beliefs and extends family ties beyond blood and race, beyond gender and power, beyond wealth and status. For Jesus, his brothers and sisters are those who live the command to love. The second reading today said, love one another with the affection of brothers and sisters. Now Paul, and Jesus for that matter, did not know family systems theory. But Bob preached the gospel of love, and love underlined his life and his counseling. If you had the privilege of listening to Bob lecture on family systems theory, you experienced the breadth of his knowledge and creativity. He continually read and updated himself. He would send articles to me that he thought I'd be interested in. He adhered to the highest standards of ethical norms. Sister Diane Giannata and I are the board members of the Center for Family Systems that Bob founded, and he always amazed us with his attention to detail with his desire to provide the most comprehensive service for his clients. When he joined the Yudist congregation, Bob experienced a renewal of his priesthood. Diocesan priesthood was too clerical and too controlling for Bob. while the Yudas offered an attractive balance of freedom and connectedness. After the death of his mother, Bob became pastor of a Yudas parish in San Diego. He was able to bring much of St. Joseph's parish to that assignment. He also experienced the difficulties and pressures that are part and parcel of parish ministry today. Like many of us, Bob had a complicated relationship with the institutional church. <laughs> the church at times presents itself like a dysfunctional family. <laughs> but Bob incorporated ecclesial principles where Christ's love, compassion, and heroism sparkle within the darkness of sin and death. I was intrigued with Pope Francis' recent trip to Canada, where he apologized to the indigenous peoples for abuses committed by Catholic missionaries in the notorious residential schools. Francis said this, 
I ask forgiveness, telling you once more that I am deeply sorry. In the face of this deplorable evil, the church kneels before God and implores forgiveness for the sins of her children. Now, papal acts of contrition were actually introduced by Pope John Paul II. During his papacy, John Paul apologized to Jews, to women, to people convicted by the Inquisition, to Muslims killed by the Crusaders. The Pope apologized for Christians involved in the African slave trade, for the Church's role in the religious wars that followed the Protestant Reformation. John Paul, of course, apologized for the silence of the Christians during the Holocaust. Here's my point. A humbled and chastised church was the church that Father Bob Pirelli embraced and gave his life to. This was the church that he served until the day he died. So farewell, Bob. You are missed, and you will be missed by your sister Camille, your brother John, <coughs> your loving nephews and nieces, great nieces, great nephews. <coughs> An extended family and friends. Countless people encountered God's love through you. Thank you for a life well lived. And now let us pray. With gratitude and confidence, we come before the Lord and offer these the needs of God's people gathered here. The petitions in today's prayer of the faithful will be proclaimed by Catherine, Elizabeth, and Julian, Father Bob's nieces. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Mother, the Church, Pope Francis, Bishop Michael Fisher, and all the priests, clergy, and lay leaders, as they continue to spread God's message of infinite love and eternal salvation, we pray to the Lord. For our government leaders, worldwide, nationally, and locally, that they may recognize the grave responsibility that comes with power and may protect the weak and persecuted and work for an end to violence. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the innocent men, women, and children who are the victims of recent shootings in Buffalo and elsewhere, and for all those who mourn their loss. May the Lord, who created each of us in his image and likeness, grant them peace and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the people served by Father's Bob Ministries, the weak, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and the marginalized, that God continues to help them as they face the challenges and struggles of everyday life. We pray to the Lord. For those of us here today, family, friends, and associates, that we not only feel the sorrow of what we lost by Bob's death, Uncle Bob's death, but also the joy and gratitude for what we gained by his life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And finally, for the repose of the soul of Father Bob Pirelli. With faith and devotion, he dedicated his life to the service of God. Let the merciful and loving God welcome him this day into the eternal life that is the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Compassionate God, these are the prayers we offer at this moment. Hear them and the many more that are within our hearts this day. Grant them all in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. The gifts which are located at the side table will be presented by Father Bob's great nieces and nephews.
My sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, who is our almighty Father. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Father Bob, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our risen Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the hosts of heaven adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Bob, whom you have called from this world to yourself. 
Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With confidence, we pray together in the words Jesus taught us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. If you would be seated for just a moment. Father Bob, I know you're in heaven and you brought the largest congregation here since the pandemic. For Holy Communion this afternoon, we're at, we will only give communion in the hand. If you're in the main part of the church, come down the center aisle and go back on the side aisle. If you're in the sides of the church, a minister will be up in the front for you. If you need a gluten-free host, there will be someone near the tabernacle to help you with that. In Father Bob's words, every Sunday he would tell us that this is the house of God, and in God's house all are welcome here. So if you're not prepared to receive communion this afternoon, or you're not a member of this faith community, we would love to have you come up for a blessing. If you put your hand over your heart, it would be the honor of the, of the celebrant to give you that blessing in Bob's honor today. Thank you. I'll take, I'll take 
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Bob, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you be seated for just a moment, Father Bob's niece, Laura Melinda, would like to say remarks. I'm Lauren, and I would like to welcome you here today the way that my Uncle Bob would on this perfect Saturday morning. <laughs> I am up here not because I was Bob's favorite family member, <laughs> but more than likely because I am his family member most in need of therapy, <laughs> and therefore we were extraordinarily close. Direct access to the best advice giver on earth was a perk that I took full advantage of. On behalf of Bob's family, thank you for your presence here today, for your donations to his favorite causes in his honor, for your selfless offers of love and support, for every single memory that you have shared, and for every story you have told. In preparing to speak about one of the most gifted speakers I have ever listened to, no pressure, I tried to mimic his process. Research relentlessly, focus on a theme, tell a story, sprinkle some humor throughout, and leave your audience filled with hope. I have read hundreds of your sentiments online this week, hunting down a theme, and I think I have it. If you are comfortable, I would like you to raise your hand and keep it raised if any of these apply to you. He helped me with my marriage. He helped me with my business. He helped me as a person. He helped me understand my faith. He helped me through difficult and complicated times. Keep them up and look around. Okay, you can put them down now. A woman named Sandy Shepard, who I haven't met yet, but wrote this in a remembrance notice about Uncle Bob and Sandy. I do not know if you are here or not today, but man, did you nail it. Father Bob saw goodness, logic, and truth and then wove it together with humor in a way that reached all people without exception. I didn't see very many people without hands up, so I am inclined to agree with Sandy. He reached people. He lit fires in people. Think about the magnitude of that for a moment, about what you're all doing now because his words reached you. The watershed effect that his teachings and preachings and advice will have on our communities, on our families, our companies, our marriages, our children. He made us better. One of my favorite things about how Uncle Bob helped people is that he wasn't afraid to get in it with you. He didn't mind if you were a mess. He didn't admonish. He didn't judge. He cared only about forward movement. If you were willing to do the work, he got right in that mess with you. When I turned 18 years old, the fine folks at Capital One decided that I seemed responsible enough for my first credit card. <laughs> they were incorrect. <laughs> A couple of months later, I had racked up, wait for it, 
$1,500 in debt, which was considerable because my disposable income at the time hovered right around $0 per month. My mother shared my financial stupidity with my Uncle Bob, and he summoned me to lunch at the Canisius College cafeteria, where he promptly wrote a check to Capital One for $1,500. Then we sat there, and we made a list of everything that I spent money on. Then he took my cell phone. He made sure my meal plan had enough funds for three meals a day and he walked me down to the Canisius College bookstore and he stood there while I applied for a job. <laughs> Once per week after that we met and I signed my entire paycheck over to him and he handed me back one $20 bill per week and in a few months I paid that credit card off. Luckily, my messes got less financial in nature over the years, but that was definitely not the last time he jumped in with both feet to swim alongside me to shore. I love that story because as I came into adulthood and my relationship with my uncle evolved into a loving, intellectual friendship between a couple of reluctant entrepreneurs, I started to realize how rare it was that I got to know him on so many different levels. I feel lucky to have known him as a real person first before I had any idea that he was larger than life. I think when people like my Uncle Bob pass away, it becomes so easy to reflect on what they have contributed to our lives because we are so grateful. But I also wanted to take a moment and share some things about not Father Bob, not Dr. Pirelli, but Uncle Bob. Maybe some things that you didn't know. He would lose his mind if you cut a cake without running the knife under hot water first. <laughs> this was non-negotiable. You might as well throw the cake against the wall. He left home for good when he was 13 years old. He committed his life to the church as soon as he graduated the eighth grade, enrolling in a boarding school to prepare for the seminary. He really wanted to try smoking weed. <laughs> I have no confirmation that this bucket list item was checked off before he left us, but I really hope that it was. <laughs> he had a way with children. He and my daughter had the neatest little relationship. He was so excited when we decided to send her to school just a block from his home. He made sure he was on the emergency contact list and he told me 100 times that he could walk there in three minutes if needed. He never showed up without a little something for her and he stayed cool as a cucumber when she exercised her lungs on airplanes as babies do. This will not surprise anyone who has been to his home slash office, but serious consideration was given to burying him with his label maker. In our family, he always brought the salad, he always said the blessing, but he also never cared if we forgot. And he always took a tiny nap between dinner and dessert. He was an extremely gifted napper. Every year at the holidays, he donated to a cause of importance to him in the name of my cousins and me. For several years, the recipient was Heifer International. So he would buy a goat or a cow or a pig or a sheep, and it would be donated to provide wool or milk or eggs to families in need. And we would place bets on what the animal would be each year, and we would argue over who contributed what parts of the animal, and none of it was mature or serious, but he was still, very, he was still doing a very lovely thing, and I think that really sums him up. You can do very good things and you can also not take yourself so seriously. So let us honor his memory by remembering what he taught us about humor. Let us honor his memory 
by practicing what he taught us about healthy communication with one another, and about the messiness, and about the work, and about moving forward. And lastly, let us honor his memory by living what he preached about everyone having a seat at God's table. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lauren, for those gifted words. I'd like to invite Father Ronald Bagley of the Udist uh, priest for his remark. I have a message from our provincial superior, and it's directed primarily to John and Camille and the family. Um, but I, I do need to tell you, I don't know how many times you've heard Bob's presentation on family systems theory. I heard it many times. He has told people all over the country and all over the world that he is the most well-adjusted middle child you'll ever meet. <laughs> dear John, Camille, and all the family of our dear father Bob, it is with great sadness that I write to you today to offer my prayerful support upon the sudden and untimely loss of your brother and Uncle Bob. While we mourn his passing, we are also filled with thanksgiving for his many years of loving and dedicated service as an ordained priest. For 46 years, he has dedicated himself to spreading the good news of Christ through his outstanding preaching. He was able to teach seminarians and others to be good homilists as well. As a Udist, he was able to develop his talents as a counselor, teacher, and psychotherapist. With great compassion and insight, he brought healing and strength to thousands of clients and parishioners. This multi-talented priest will be sadly missed by so many people. Yet, I know, that he will most sorely be missed by you, his loving family. He was so dedicated to you and was always eager to spend time with you. You and your parents provided that special place where the seed of his vocation germinated and took root. Thank you for all that you have done to help Bob become the caring and compassionate priest and counselor that he was. On behalf of all the Udist fathers, including our superior general, Father Jean-Michel Amorio, we assure you of our prayers for you at this time of grief. May you be consoled by the faith in the risen Christ, which sustained Bob during his life on earth. May we all find strength in the hope that we will one day be reunited with Bob in heaven. Sincerely yours in Christ, Father Gilles Ouellette, Provincial Superior, Province of North America and the Philippines. And now I'd like to ask Father Peter Corrales, the Vicar General of the Diocese of Buffalo. Bishop Fisher regrets that he is unable to be here with us in person today. He is uh, out of town this weekend, but he certainly is united with us in prayer. And on his behalf, uh, I wish to express his condolences and sympathies to Father Bob's family and his friends, to his clients, to the people of St. Joseph's University Parish, to the Udis Fathers. We know that with his very untimely and unexpected death, he will be greatly missed and with his passing, there is a great void, probably that none of us, maybe even collectively, can fill. So as we gather today to give thanks for his life, for his priesthood, and for his ministry, 
May he hear the words of our Lord, who said, Well done, good and faithful servant. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Please join in our Thanksgiving hymn number 526 in the hymnals, Sing with all the saints in glory, 526, please stand. Trusting in God today, we pray together for Bob, and now it's time for a last farewell. It's always so difficult to say goodbye. When we had the tragedy of 9-11, Queen Elizabeth wrote to the citizens of the United States. One of the things she said was this, grief is the price we pay for love. The fact that we grieve, that we mourn, that we weep is a sign that someone's life has made a difference for us as they pass through this world. And our grief is a tribute to that life. So although this congregation today may disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again one day in the joy of God's kingdom, where we'll see Bob again and enjoy his friendship. Until that time, let us support one another with our trust in God's unending love. Let us pray. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Robert, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead, but in your sight he will live forever. Forgive whatever sins he may have committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Salve Regina.
at the hundreds or thousands of masses that Father Bob Pirelli celebrated here. He always concluded by saying, this mass will soon be over. When you leave, please leave in peace. Thanks be to God.